Hello, and welcome to another business update uh, where we're highlighting the concerns of small businesses and nonprofits during this business interruption uh, caused by the coronavirus pandemic. I'm happy to be joined with Jessica Eshleman, who's the executive director of Union Square Main Streets. Hello to you, Jessica. Hi, Dave. Thanks so much for having me back and for Somerville Media Center's continued effort to tell the stories of our businesses during this time. Really appreciate that. And also, I'm, I'm joined with Joe Carrero, who is the business manager of Mariachi Foods, which uh, uh, owns uh, El Potro Mexican Grill in Union Square, as well as uh, three other locations uh, in the region. Hello to you, Joe. I'm good. Thanks again, Dave. And thank you, Jess, for inviting me to join you here on the panel. So we're, we're going to start off asking uh, how everybody's doing. Um, Joe, how are you doing and how are your employees uh, faring right now? Opened up our Malden location and, uh, you know, actually we're going to try Chelsea tomorrow uh, for the first time and see. But the, our real incentive behind it is our employees. Um, it really has nothing to do with revenues um, in in all likelihood, we're going to probably be, we are losing money. Um, you know, when you, when you think of operational costs, um, in our locations, but we really want to try to put our employees back to work and give them something, um, to kind of hold on to a little bit, especially we're a family run restaurant and, uh, our employees are very much like family to us. And so we want to kind of thank them for their loyalty to us. I mean, in the restaurant industry, people move and shake all the time and, We've been very lucky to really have a high retention rate with our employees because we try to treat them well. And we're appreciative of the fact that um, they've stuck with us. Uh, and so we're trying to you know, put some folks back to work. Um, and that's been the goal. Um, operationally, it's a little difficult because, um, you know, Somerville is our original location. Uh, it's also our tiniest location. And Lowell is very much like it. And so Somerville and Lowell really, the model for takeout it works because our costs are, you know, we are very controlled. But in our two larger locations, Malden and Chelsea, um, it it's really not a very effective model. And so we're open, opening to kind of really pilot, you know, what we could bear market wise, but also to kind of make a determination uh, that we'd be ready in the event that uh, dine in service in some form or fashion is opened up in the next, you know, few weeks uh, is, you know, is the goal, but it also will give us realistically once we know where, you know, everything is at an opportunity to be, be honest with our employees and say, you know, we're not going to be able to come back to full capacity and e explore things uh, like a work share program. Uh, you know, the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, engages in this, and this would allow us to bring back our staff up, you know, at, um, as little as a, a decrease of 50% of their hours and their pay, but allow them also during that interval to still collect unemployment. So not that we can double dip, but what allow us to do is to bring people back, have them working a little bit, kind of share the wealth among the four locations, and then possibly uh, allow them to collect partial unemployment so they could take full extent of the benefits that um, the federal government is issued through the CARE Act uh, for the 13 weeks of uh, COVID-19 related uh, uh, economic relief, as well as potentially take advantage of the Massachusetts uh, COVID-19 relief uh, for unemployment. So we're doing our best to kind of explore those options so that we can, you know, possibly give back. But, you know, we also have to be realistic. Um, you know, we were having a discussion about our Chelsea location where just to keep it closed, it's costing us over $20,000 a month. So if it's gonna, if we're gonna pay that much to keep it closed, why not try to open it and bring some people back to work? Maybe have some goodwill, serve some customers, and and do some things like that. So we'll never probably equal what we need to keep it open operationally, you know, uh, short term. But it will at least allow us to kind of continue our brand and you know, and possibly do things. Uh, you know, for instance, we have on board the opportunity to. Um, work next week with some of the, the hospitals and the clinics that have been on the front line since Chelsea's been so hard hit um, and serve, you know, some of the um, the hospital workers and the, and the front line workers. We're going to offer them up, you know, some lunch next week. And we've done that with the, the Lowell General Hospital uh, up in 
in Lowell and we were looking and pursuing avenues where we can kind of give back Summer, in Somerville and Malden as well. It's just the opportunities are not as, as present there um, as they are in some of the other locations, but we're doing our best to try to really help everybody, you know, in a community sense, which is something that we're really all about, I guess, is, you know, before all this happened. Yeah. And then the, the, the added challenge of trying to reopen in a, in a, in a place like Chelsea, um, which has a real uh, a concentration of infections. Um, what are what are the special concerns with with Chelsea and Lowell, which are kind of hot spots right now? Um, well, the special concerns is really you know dealing uh, in a what I would call an egalitarian way with you know what what we have to do. We our first and foremost health and safety you know come first. So we have to make sure that we're employing all the things that we need to employ. Uh, not only for our staff, but also for our customers. But also at the same time, we understand people are stressed. People have a sense of desperation and, you know, it's it's difficult. So, for instance, I can give you uh, an example just from this week. It, it, I ventured out of my house to one of the locations for the first time in over five weeks this week. And I went to our Lowell location for a meeting with our general management. And while I was there, I had an opportunity to witness our restaurant manager interacting with a patron uh, the patron came in without a, a mask on. And so my restaurant manager has uh, handled it beautifully. He said, you know, you know, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I was wondering, do you have a mask? And the, the gentleman who seemed very annoyed that we we're asking him said, yeah, it's in the car. And we're like, we're really sorry that, you know, but we need to ask you to, to return to your car and, and get your mask in order to pick up. You know, we we're sorry for the inconvenience. And the person really was kind of, annoyed that we asked him to do that. And so I waited upstairs because I wanted to see what was going to happen. Um, and he did, he left, he went back to his car and he came back in within a few minutes, picked up his food, but you know, we, we tried to be pleasant, but he definitely wasn't pleasant. Uh, you know, and you feel bad because obviously, you know, you, you don't want to insult a, a customer, but, um, you know, we have to do what we need to do. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's difficult when you hear stories like, uh, the Polar Cave ice cream shop story from over the weekend where teenagers and, and people are being accosted um, by customers, it makes some of our servers scared to come back. They're like, you know, we don't want to deal with that, especially if you take, you know, risks. Uh, you know, how are we going to handle that? You know, they, they are, we have a, young, a lot of young servers who are concerned that what would they do with a um, an aggressive customer, you know? Um, and so, We've got to balance that with health and safety. You know, uh, Mayor Curratone has been on the forefront of really ensuring everybody um, who, who live in Somerville are safe uh, and secure, both business owners and, um, you know, consumers. And I applaud him for that. I think what he's doing is, is exceptional. Uh, but at the same time, there is an enforcement mechanism. You know, do, you know, we were asked when we opened our Somerville location, our servers there asked us, so what happens if someone does come in? Do we call the police? Who do we, you know, how do we handle it? And, you know, I, I had to be honest with them and say, I'm, you, you got to try to be polite and handle it. But if, if you feel like someone is out of line, then yes, pick up the phone, call me, call one of the other managers. And if, if we're not available, then you do need to call the police or call the board of health and, and tell them that we have a customer here who's not following along. Not that we want somebody to have to pay a $300 fine, but because we have an obligation. We don't want to be the, the business on the, on the news on channel five or tw channel 25 that says, Oh, look, they, they're serving people and ignoring the, the, the mayor and the state's, you know, uh, mask order. So you, you, you have to kind of balance these two masters and it's, it's really difficult. Um, I actually was in a meeting last night, uh, with the Chelsea chamber of commerce, um, specific to the, the situation that's happening in Chelsea. And it's, it's difficult to, you know, it makes you, you know, you're in tears thinking about, what these families um, are, are going through in Chelsea um, and you want to give back to the community, but you know, when you see the, the risks climbing and how it's spreading so widely and you, you know, I, I remember in the couple of weeks after uh, we were all asked to stay home, I went to the Chelsea location to meet up with our staff to, to give them instructions on how to file for unemployment and how to, um, uh, you know, just, kind of transition into our furloughs. And I witnessed people who clearly were not, you know, 
taking this very seriously and, you know, making jokes in, in English and Spanish about, you know, how stupid this was. And, and I've spoken to some of my uh, staff who've lived in these communities and they're like, it's, it's like a battle line out in this, um, you know, area in Everett and Chelsea Revere where the cases are really high. And so it is a little hard to kind of, you know, manage those expectations with people. Um, but at the same time, you know, maintain a positive, uh, spirit in our staff. So one thing that Union Square Main Streets is really, um, really focused on right now is creating open air commerce opportunities wherever possible. And I'd like to just pause for a moment and, and comment that, or highlight rather that I'm, we're referring to this as open air commerce because we believe restaurants in particular, we're used to dining outdoors um, along the patios when sidewalks are wide enough for them. But this concept is actually more broad than that, and it would include also retail and service sectors to the greatest extent possible so that we can maintain social distancing measures that are in place for very good reason, but also increase businesses' opportunity to do a volume of business that is necessary. But third, also instill more confidence back in our patrons. We spent the last eight or nine weeks uh, urging folks to stay away from our commercial districts. Now we have to carefully undo that. Mm. So from my seat and my perspective, when I think about getting creative and reclaiming public space um, or repurposing, I should say, public space in our density to make possible these outdoor uh, retail opportunities, there's really a lot of opportunity for us to accomplish those goals, but also to be a community again, um, alongside one another, supporting our local businesses. Yeah, and and one of those uh, initiatives is is the reopening of the Union Square Farmers Market. Um, did you want to Did you want to uh, talk to us about how how that planning is going? Um, you know, it, you know, you bring up the social distancing that people need to to continue to practice. Um, how is the the layout of the farmers market going to be uh, affected by those concerns? Pretty significantly. Um, and to share with your viewers, uh, the farmers market will open a week from Saturday. So that's Saturday, May 23rd on the Union Square Plaza. We have been working very closely with the city's public space and urban forestry team. Um, four members of their staff meet with us uh, at least weekly, if not twice weekly, to understand how to do social distancing at the market. And it has very real world implications as we're seeing in our brick and mortar businesses. Um, we'll have close to 50 vendors um, or participating groups, I should say, during a normal farmer's market season. And, and we know we'll have about 25, um, at least initially, uh, until we get more science around what uh, expanding the market could look like. So to start on May 23rd, we'll have about half of the vendors um, we are asking our shoppers to take a pledge to wear their masks, Joe, so that uh, our staff has some tools at the ready for um, everybody to join in this in the responsibility of shopping safely. Um, there's other suggestions or, or recommendations on that pledge, such as select one shopper to represent your household so that we can more efficiently serve more shoppers at the market. We have been given... Um, restrictions on the number of people that can be in the market area at one time. So for us, it'll be about communicating um, efficiency and safety. Um, and it's going to look a lot different this year. Uh, we're so proud of this Union Square Farmers Market being the community's living room when we have music and community groups participating and folks really get to catch up with each other. And uh, as at the season start, it's not going to be able to operate in those ways but we couldn't be more proud about carrying forward access to local and healthy food at this time of needing really strong immune systems and creating a marketplace for 25 local farmer and food producers. Um, what I am really pleased to share with your viewers right now uh, is that thanks to support from Somerville's Job Creation and Retention Trust, Union Square Main Streets applied for a grant 
that is enabling us to increase our SNAP match at the farmer's market by 400%. So for folks who've come to the market since 2005, they may be, you may be familiar that we've offered a dollar for dollar match up to $10 each market that we're open if you use SNAP benefits. This grant is allowing us to increase that to a dollar for dollar match up to $50 per market through June. And so we're really excited about getting the word out to folks who rely on these benefits or maybe new to receiving these benefits and using them. We've created a, a position in our organization called Snap Match Outreach Coordinator to help folks understand how to layer this benefit with Somerville's food security benefits. Um, there's really a comprehensive effort here throughout our city to keep access to food flowing, particularly in this increased time of need. So folks should reach out to us uh, to learn more about the SNAP match. We want to match the dollars. So please come with your EBT or your pandemic EBT card. I want to highlight that currently our funding for this increased match of up to $50 per market is in place through June. So don't delay. Come every week and maximize your benefits. Highest hope is that we're going to be able to get renewed funding for that for the remainder of our season. But what I can guarantee now is May 23rd through the end of June. Like moments that that have encouraged you or your staff, um, even though the outlook is is kind of bleak. <laughs> what what's driving everybody? It is just how loved that we are by our customers mm -hmm. um, and how supported that we are by them. Um, just the, the reviews and the comments that we're getting on our social media and, um, you know, people are leaving tips for takeout, which, you know, honestly, I don't know about you. I mean, I, I do it because I work in the restaurant industry, but if I did a survey of our, our, of our checks before all of this happened, I guarantee less than 5% of the people who get takeout, it, uh, it leave a tip. People are leaving tips for our services and it's, it's just great. And the other thing that I think has been a really positive for me is I had an opportunity, I was invited uh, to be part of the dining and nightlife group that the Somerville Chamber of Commerce has that I was never invited to before. Um, but it really highlighted uh, in a call that I was on with them this week, how all of us as restaurants are, are really pulling together. Um, it's always been a, a, a motto of mine. I, I don't believe in, Jess has heard me say it a million and a half times, I, I don't believe in competition. I only believe in collaboration. And I think, you know, having a million restaurants as neighbors in my, in my community is a great thing because it makes us a dining destination. And I can't, ex, you know, I can't say enough how all of our communities are coming together. I told a story yesterday that uh, up in Lowell, uh, we, we're in downtown and we have a bunch of restaurants that are kind of clustered together. And one of the restaurants serves a, a jalapeno margarita. Um, and, uh, and right now, because we can't do mixed drinks, we're kind of all selling kits. You know, ours is a virgin margarita kit and you go home, you add your tequila. So the, the owner of this uh, Fuse Bistro reached out to me via email and goes, hey, Joe, I, we're going to be highlighting all of our drinks. But, you know, we know that your only drink you're doing right now is a margarita. So we're not going to do our jalapeno margarita. We just want to let you know that that, that we're not we don't want to compete with you on that. And I was like, you know, that means a lot to me that, you know, that you're you're going to have all these other drinks. And here's one of your signature drinks and you're going to ignore it. Um, I was talking to Jess Willis, who um, is one of the. The, the general manager of the independent brass union. Uh, and just, she said, you know, they made the announcement on social media, they were coming back for takeout. And she said, literally within 10 seconds, Joe, you like commented and was like, hooray. She's like, you know, you don't know how nice that feels as an, as an owner. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I think I get it. Like, you know, I've had more direct messages from other restaurant folks um, in all of our communities to kind of just say, Hey, how you doing? Or, Hey, thanks for, for helping to spread the word and doing things like that. And I just, that's the positive is that as a community, you know, I think people are adopting my own motto, which is, is let's collaborate. Let's not compete against each other. You know, it's, it, it we, we've got to, we got to stick in this together. Um, you know, and I'd rather advertise, you know, uh, 50 other people specials that they've got going on because I want them all to survive. I want EB Sushi. I want Casa B. I want the independent. I want, you know, Masala Square to, to thrive um, 
because I need them when we all can come back to make Union Square a dining destination. And it may sound counterintuitive, but I I haven't found somebody who can give me a logical reason why it's counterintuitive. I, I just, we all have to stick together because, you know, it's every day I, I see a blog post of a longstanding relation, uh, restaurant that's basically just said, they're not just closing for COVID-19, they're closing for good. They're giving up. Um, we've had offers to buy restaurants and I don't even want to tell you, you know, who they are, that I've gone to my general managers and they're shocked. They're blown away. They're like, really? They contacted you to see if we'd be interested in buying them? And I said, yep. And it's just, it, it, it makes you sad. It, it can bring tears to your eyes that, you know, that, you know, my, my, our main general manager said to me the other day in our meeting, he's like, you know, I'm proud of what we've done as a, as a group, because we have built something so great that we're going to survive this. I'm going to find a way for us to survive this. He says, but it makes me sad when I talk to my friends and they're, they're not surviving it and they're going to have to get out of it. And I, so the high for me is just that, that spirit, that, um, that embodiment that, you know, honestly is one of the reasons why I love Jessica so much because she brings that same spirit to all the brick and mortar businesses, not just the restaurants. I mean, to all the retail, you know, they sent, uh, Kate and Jess, I'm not sure which one of them sent it to me, but sent me a picture yesterday of a poster was uh, on the A-frame at Casa B, and it was one of our Union Square Main Street's promo posters that was, they had posted up there, and it just warmed my heart. Like, like you know, go Union Square. That's that's I love that. I love the fact um, that, you know, we're a little engine that could. Um, I think our, our friend uh, Debbie from Play Union uh, gave me the motto about too small to fail. And ever since she told me that in one of our promo meetings, almost every post that I put on social media in some way, I try to find a way to incorporate that because that's what it is. You know, and, you know we're all too small to fail, you know, and that's how I like it. Jessica, how, how can you follow that up? <laughs> well, I have to say, thanks for talking about the spirit of our community, because Joe's absolutely right. It's really hard for small businesses, particularly the brick and mortar businesses that have been at the forefront of this from the very earliest stages of COVID coming to the Boston area. But this sense of solidarity and uh, community is still here in Somerville. It's still here in Union Square. And I, there was... Um, some momentum that happened last night at City Hall that I would really like to note. Um, and I, I believe Joe um, is a good guest to have alongside of me because his restaurant has made some serious decisions based on this topic. And, and what this is, is last night, um, thanks to City Councilor Ben Ewing Campen and Mayor Curtitoni's leadership, the City Council passed unanimously a resolution to cap delivery fees, delivery app service fees. So if your viewers are not aware, oftentimes when a restaurant has delivery available, they're using a third party. It may be Uber Eats. It may be Postmates. It may be DoorDash, Grubhub. There's a lot of them out there. And while the, those platforms return a really valuable service and convenient service to the consumer purchasing, very few of, of us are aware that 30% or more of each transaction is taken out as fees. And so our businesses who are not able to do in-person dining, um, where the majority of the revenue is traditionally coming from, have reverted to a pickup or takeout model um, at best, they're operating at 10 to 20% of normal revenues. And then these third-party apps are coming in to take up to 30% or even more in some cases. So unanimously last night, the city council passed a resolution um, urging the state to pass a bill that's before them now, Bill 5045. This will be really meaningful to our businesses to, to, to temporarily suspend fees. What we're asking is that they get capped at 10% for this time. Um, so we'll have to see what happens at the state house. But what I'd love to take uh, the opportunity to do right now is urge any viewers who are watching, please order directly from the business whenever possible. I want to let you know that a lot of these apps, um, sometimes it's possible that these apps have created um, a fake it's not fake, but a web web page that they it is fake. 
From a restaurant owner's perspective, it's fake. Um, if you Google a restaurant, you may get a web page that looks like it's um, maintained by the owner, but really it's maintained by these third-party apps so that they can drive delivery and therefore collect high fees. So please ensure to your best of your ability, you are ordering directly from your favorite restaurant in Somerville. Call them if need be. Um, and at, if possible, if you feel safe, do pick up. Call in your order, go get it. And that's the way you can be sure that our local businesses are retaining as much of their hard-earned profit as possible. And I, and I can speak to something that I was actually talking to a few folks in, in Union Square about this week, um, which is a, f a few of us um, have just a strict, you know, uh, takeout, you know, is what's on our, our advertising. But we've had a few folks call and say, you know, I don't feel comfortable coming in. Is there any way that you could do a curbside? Absolutely. Like, you know, if you call and you tell my server, you know, meet me outside, you know, we'll, we'll tell you text and we'll come outside with your, your thing. The only difficulty it is for us is, you know, from a payment function, but, um, you know, we, we can accommodate that kind of things. And, and they go back to what Jess is saying. I, I'll tell a, one quick little funny story. It, a lot of these services are predatory. I mean, they're, they're, they'd be honest. Uh, we had someone call our Somerville location about four, five, six months ago before any of this happened and wanted a pulled pork quesadilla. And my server basically said, we don't have a pulled pork quesadilla. And, they, and the customer said, yes, you do. I'm looking at your menu right now. And I want and I want a pulled pork quesadilla. And she's like, sorry, sir, I'm, I, I don't know what menu you're looking at. But, you know, I and he was very, very confrontational with her. And he said and she asked, can you please call? our manager and he'll call me direct. So the gentleman called me and I had him tell me what the URL on his computer was. And it was a URL from Grubhub that had basically taken my entire menu and bastardized it. None of the, the charges were correct. There was over 24 menu items that we don't even serve. And what they were doing is they were selling it as our, as, as our um, menu. And so, what ended up happening, even the, on the items that we did have on our menu, we had a burrito, uh, a bean burrito that we sell for nine ninety five. They were selling it for fourteen ninety five. So what was happening is they were buying, the people were paying, um, you know, whoever the Grubhub person was, they were coming in and giving their credit card and then they get reimbursed by Grubhub for what the customer paid to them. Plus they get a delivery fee on top of that. And that happens more often than you're not. Um, you know, Grub, Grubhub is one, DoorDash actually partnered up with Yelp, and many people don't realize this, and they put what is called a widget on many restaurants' uh, Yelp pages in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and they started doing it in Massachusetts, where the contact information on my Yelp page got changed to a Grubhub telephone number, and there was nothing that I could do to fix it. When I called Yelp, Yelp said, oh, you got to call uh, DoorDash. When I called DoorDash, DoorDash told me I had to call Yelp. And I said, I don't care which one of you fixes it. I'm giving you all 48 hours to fix it. Otherwise, then my next call is to the attorney general's office in the state of Massachusetts. And the widget came down. But that, that's what it takes. And, I, you know, I was just on a seminar earlier today where they were talking about restaurant owners, except in times like this, we don't have time to pursue this. So right. if my owners didn't have a me to do this for them, they would be suffering, you know, from this misadvertisement. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's just really difficult. You know, the, it, the predatory nature of some of these delivery companies. I'm deleting all those apps from my phone right now. And I urge okay. to do the same. So we have to leave it there. Um, yeah. Support businesses uh, directly. Um, you know, as Jessica advised, uh, good, good stuff coming from Joe Carrero, who is the business manager at Mariachi Foods and you know it and love it as El Potro Mexican Grill in Union Square and other locations uh, throughout Eastern Massachusetts. And Jessica Eshleman, uh, Union Square Main Street's executive director. Always good to have you on. Uh, good to have you on for the first time, Joe. And Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. All right. You too. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.